little itty bit. Get him. Oh, that ear. The ear is definitely going to come. Oh, itty bit. You're going to have to wear a muzzle if you act like that. You're going to have to wear a muzzle with that. <laughs> hey, guys. This is Mark Wright from Argos Dog Training, and I got little, little itty bit of bones with me. Today, we're going to be talking about something very exciting and something that's very useful for most of you, I would think, especially those of you who have dogs that are difficult dogs um, as well, and that will be the... Muzzle. Yes, we're going to be talking about muzzle conditioning today. We're going to be talking about which dog should wear a muzzle, when they should wear a muzzle. How? A, what is a good muzzle? We're going to be talking about all of that. We're going to be talking about itty bit and how to get itty bit conditioned to using muzzles. So that's what this video is about. Check it out. Here comes the thing with the and all that. All right, so the thing about muzzles is that there's a lot of people out there who feel like muzzles might um, be a stigma for their dog, that people might think that their dog is mean and so forth. But you know what? The muzzle does not make your dog look mean. What makes your dog look mean is um, those huge canines that they have for, uh, you know, bringing down, trapping, and holding prey. What also makes your dog look mean is when they're snarling, growling, and trying to bite people. That makes them look mean too. The safest dog in the room is a dog with a muzzle on. So that's something to keep in mind. And also, yeah, the safest dog in the room is a dog with a muzzle on. We don't care what other people think. We want to keep our dog safe, right? So use your muzzle if you need it. Right, Itty? Itty Bit is um, a miniature pincer, and that means that she is a tiny biter. Um, <laughs> and uh, because of that, she likes to bite, she likes to bark, she likes to charge forward. Um, one of the things that I think is really good for Itty Bit and for a lot of dogs out there is to muzzle condition them. So where you can hang out with friends and you don't have to worry about your dog actually being able to put mouth and teeth on your friends. Arr, arr. Oh, stop. This dog. Itty bit. I don't know what's up with her. Bye. I would never do that with a real dog, but you know, whatever. Um, here we go, muzzles. So first thing we have to talk about whenever we're talking about muzzles, what's a good muzzle and what's not a good muzzle. I like muzzles in which the dog can pant. Muzzles that are open so the dog's mouth can open, they can pant. Muzzles that are open so you can put food in, in there or that the dog can drink water through. That's what I like. This is a Basketville muzzle, and they're probably one of my favorites. Um, I like the old ones with the buckle. These are kind of hard to find these days, but this is probably one of my favorites. Another great muzzle is the Jaffco muzzle. I like these a lot too. Definitely a dog can't bite. These, you'll need some alterations, um, you know, so that way you can get food in easily, maybe just cutting out which I've done in the past, cutting out a little bit, make that hole a little bigger. Still teeth can't get through, but food can go in. Great muzzle, and um, for this one, they're custom made for your dog, so you know you can send your dog's measurements in. Um, the muzzles that I don't want to use for this kind of thing is are these muzzles here. This is a grooming muzzle, and when it goes on and it fits right on the dog, what it actually does is it keeps the dog's mouth shut. It's good for short, quick things. But um, but dogs expel heat through panting, and this kind of muzzle will, will stop them from being able to do that. They also can't eat, and it might be, I don't know if they could even drink water through this. Um, and the wrong size, this muzzle in the wrong size does not stop the dog from biting at all. It has to be perfectly fit to keep the dog's mouth shut. Um, not my favorite muzzle, and definitely not a muzzle for long time use. Grooming muzzle. So I'm very curious about how, if any of you used a muzzle previously, if you did use a muzzle previously, how did you condition your dog to the muzzle? What were some of the things, the factors that made you use the muzzle? What were the situations in which you used the muzzle? And how did other people address your dog or interact with your dog while your dog was wearing the muzzle? Please let me know, just drop a comment below. Next thing we have to talk about is how to select the right muzzle. It's important that we get the right size muzzle for our dog. Um, and the Jafco, all these muzzles, Jafco, um, they actually, on their website, they will ask you for measurements of your dog and they'll tell you how to take their measurements. Um, so this is pretty, that's pretty cool for them. For the, um, the Baskerville, this is size one, this is size six. Right, so that's the size difference there. And of course they have one, two, three, four, five. 
Um, let's see. That's two. There's three. That's five. And that's four. They actually all fit together. It's kind of like one of those Russian doll things. So if I take my size two here, I don't have a lot of time to spend on this, but whatever. Size two fits. Size one fits in size two. Size two fits in size three. Size three fits in size four. And five. And size six. Here's the big one. I've used all these sizes for different dogs. Um, for Itty Bit, I think hers is gonna be this size one. Um, I tell my puppy clients to condition your dog to a muzzle regardless of your dog's temperament or personality. They all should be conditioned to a muzzle. It's just a thing that we do. It's a fun game. It's an activity that we can do with a dog to teach them. Also, if you're hiking with your dog, your dog is in the woods, they might step on a thorn. If you hate to hike and you're a city dweller and you're walking on the sidewalk, there might be glass, there might be a pebble, there might be something sharp that your dog could step on. When a dog is injured, they tend to be protective of themselves and they can use their mouth as a way to guard against the thing that hurts, you know? Um, so in order to administer care a lot of the times, we have to be able to put on a muzzle on the dog. Now when we condition the dog to the muzzle, we're already conditioning them to enjoy the muzzle, so it shouldn't be a big deal even if the dog is limping. If we do the conditioning right, they will limp right up to the muzzle and they'll limp and put their mouth right inside the muzzle and then you'll be able to close it um, and you'll be able to administer care to them without it being a big deal, right? And um, the association makes it so the dog likes the muzzle. It puts them at ease, it relaxes them. That's what we want from the muzzle. We don't wanna make it into a thing that we have to strap on the dog right before they go to the vet and they get poked with a whole bunch of needles and stuff, all right? That's another time when uh, dogs need muzzles, especially shy dogs. Is if they're going to the vet, if there's a rescue dog and they haven't been conditioned right to handling, um, you know, or going to the groomer, you might want need that dog to be in a muzzle as well. For those of you who have puppies and, um, and would like to make sure your dog is able to be handled well and easily, and maybe not have to use a muzzle, um, check out our puppy handling videos. There should be links for it. There, maybe down there. I don't know, how many links can you put in these things, Frank? Can you just make it all links, just everywhere? Frank is nodding no. He says, no, you can't do that. So the next question I like to address is when should the dog wear the muzzle? Um, whenever you think that there's a high chance that your dog might bite a person or another dog, that's a perfect time to put on a muzzle. Um, if your dog, so once again, if the dog is really nervous when guests come over, a muzzle is going to be great for that situation. If my nieces and nephew comes over, then probably my brothers and my sisters might be over. And if they're over, we might be hanging out, drinking, having fun, you know, playing around. And I might not be watching my dog as much. My nieces and nephews might be young. I might want to put my dog on the muzzle um, for that kind of scenario. So that way nothing bad can possibly happen, especially if I have a dog that's not conditioned to that kind of thing. Um, and that, or a dog that practices making unwise decisions, um, that dog would wear a muzzle as well. Um, so when guests come into the house, when there's stressful situations, um, if I have a dog that is lashing out, if I have poor leash handling and the dog is lashing out to people on the street, then definitely I'm gonna use a muzzle. Well guys, that's it for this episode. But in the next episode, we will be you doing practical exercises to condition your dog to the muzzle. If you like what you see here today, then definitely give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. If you'd like to learn more about Argos Dog Training, then check the description below for links to our other social media outlets and to the website argostraining.com. Until the next time, enjoy your day and enjoy your dog.